Welcome back, this is Yama Jack, and today we got Gunslinger Lavender Town Suicidal, and uh, today my parents went to a, uh, a restaurant or something, I don't know, they, they got some kind of food for, for something. You are here to clean out I don't know if they went to a restaurant or if they ordered food or if they bought a delivery service or something, I have, I have no idea how they got it. Anyway, they had, uh, they had the steak, um, and uh, my mother was like, you gotta try this, it's, it was cooked with sous vide. And it's, uh, and she was like, it's so fall off, it's, it's just, it's falling apart, it's just, it's so good, it's, it, it's all cooked with sous vide, and I'm like, alright, like, you know, there, there's not much better than, like, a sous vide steak within the, uh, within the, um, the whole, like, you know, steak environment, anyway. Um. So yeah, sure. I'll, I'll I'll give it a I'll give it a try, right? So I go and try it. It was like <laughs> terrible, <laughs> and like so the, the if you guys don't know what sous vide is, um, it's it's well sous vide is I don't know like if it's sous vide or whatever. Anyway, it what what it refers what I'm referring to anyway. I think there's like a word I have to tag onto it so the the pedants don't uh, get on my butt about it but um, what it is is it's um, cooking things in water um, so you like put your steak or whatever into a vacuum bag and then you uh, submerge it in water that is being maintained at a specific temperature uh, with uh, with something that's called like an immersion circulator uh, or you can use um, in any other way that you can maintain a very stable temperature. You can even just like boil water and then put it in and then just keep on like adding hot water and ice cubes to like maintain it yourself. It, it will actually work. It's, it's more work than like just cooking the steak normally, but you will still get like a better steak than if you were to cook it normally. Um, with with a bit of practice doing that method, but it's it's a little bit of a uh, it, it, it's more effort than it's worth in my opinion. It is still better than cooking it normally, but it, it's 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 quite a bit more work than than is is worth it in my opinion. Um, and then you leave it in the immersion circulator for uh, however long it takes to to cook the the meat or whatever it is that you're cooking. In the immersion circulator, in the uh, in the sous vide um, container thing, uh, and uh, when it comes out, it's cooked, but it is not seared, right? Like it, it's a constant temperature, right? Like if you want your steak medium rare, that's like what 127 or 130 or something like that degrees Celsius. You set your water to that. The steak can't go above that because that's what temperature the water is. You know, like it's you're you're not or 130. Yeah, like no, it'd be like 137 or something like that. Anyway, one 137 Fahrenheit, I believe. Um, and and it's not that's not important. So you, you 127. Anyway, um, you you set you set the temperature of the water to whatever temperature you want your steak to be cooked to. Right. So like if you were to have your steak on the barbecue or whatever on the if you have it on a um, in a skillet, if you were to be baking it, if you were to be you know doing whatever, you're going to take the temperature of the steak to determine whether it's cooked or not. Whatever temperature you want, you just set the water to that, and then you leave it there for like you know an hour or two, typically closer to two, um, and uh, it'll just bring the temperature of the steak up to that point, and now you have a perfectly cooked steak. However, that's not hot enough to actually get any of that Maillard reaction. So what you have to do when you take it out of the bag afterwards is uh, is you have to put a bit of a sear on it. Typically, this is done with like a like a flamethrower in in commercial applications. Um, flamethrower or like a really really hot um, like a grill or something. Like just just really really hot because you want to get it seared like stupid fast so you don't actually like cook it anymore. Just like blast the outside of it with uh, with insanely hot 
heat. <laughs> so you get that uh, that beautiful like brown Maillard reaction, but you don't actually like continue cooking the steak too much. Uh, and then what this does is you get like this very very thin ring of uh, of like overcookedness around the outside, like very very thin. And then the entire like steak basically the way the whole way through is is cooked to to the perfect you know doneness, which should be like medium rare ish. Uh, and there are two benefits to sous vide. Um, the first benefit is that it is easier to cook a steak or pork or chicken or whatever it is that you're cooking. You know, you you can do um, even like hard boiled or soft boiled eggs, even um, mashed potatoes. Like you can cook a lot of stuff in it, and it's easier to do because you just stick stuff in a bag, set the temperature to whatever you want, leave it for a while, come back, and if you're like five minutes late, it doesn't really matter because the the temperature isn't going to continue rising what you set it to anyway. Um, you just set it to what your end goal is, come back whenever you want, and it's done. Now, you, the longer you leave it, the more that, that temperature can kind of... The more that temperature can kind of start to, to mess up the... Um, the, like, fibers and stuff of whatever you're cooking. Um, but you, you can leave it for quite a while and just not worry about it. Uh, so that's, that's the first one, is it's easier to cook it. So whatever doneness you want, it is easier to get it there. Um, and as a result, it's easier to make it taste better. And in general, just will taste better. Um, so if you're, if you're cooking meat, there is no better way to do it than, uh, than sous vide. Um, it is a little bit more overall work. Like, it, it takes more time and it takes more, like, investment of effort because you have to, like, vacuum seal your thing, you have to stick it in the in the thing, and you have to, you know, cook it for two hours or whatever. Like, there is more time investment in it, but it's not as skilled work. It's not, it's not, there's no skill involved. You don't have to be good at it to, to vacuum seal a steak. You don't have to be good at it to set your sous vide to, you know, 129. And then stick a steak in it, you know, like that's not there's no skilled labor here. It's it's a very streamlined process. Um so it's less stressful for sure. But uh, also doesn't really feel like you're cooking. Um and then when you're done, you also have to like sear it and then you have more cleanup because you have like the bag, you have the vacuum pack the sealer, uh you have the like container you use to fill with water, immersion circuit, like, all this stuff has to be, you know, cleaned or at least rinsed off or, or wiped down or whatever um, and then put away, you know? Like, there's there's a lot of stuff to, to deal with um, rather than just having a steak in a pan and then just blasting it and sticking it in the oven and calling it a day. Um, but, again, not, not skilled, easier to, to do and uh, ends up with a better steak as well, in my opinion and in, like, almost everybody's opinion. Um, so that's, that's the first one, is it's better to eat it, tastes better, easier to cook, you know, all that. The other reason why sous vide is so, 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 so good, and this is honestly the main reason. You will hear people talk for days about sous vide and the benefits of it to the taste, the texture, um... You know, all of these things. You'll, you'll hear people talking about sous vide for, for just hours and hours. Because uh, that's that's obviously a very important part of what makes sous vide so good. However, it's not the main thing. There is actually two more reasons that sous vide is good, but uh, one of them is only for like commercial use. Um, but the uh, the main reason why sous vide is, is like, so important, in fact, is... Uh, is that you are maintaining that temperature very we're consistently not, alone. for however long you want. And when it comes to getting meats or, or any kind of food that you're eating to a point that it is safe to eat, there are two ways to do it. Well, there's only one way to do it, but uh, it, it kind of ends up being two ways to do it. Um, so you, you, you have to, like, 
pasteurize it basically which is to kill off like all of the bacteria uh, in whatever it is that you're eating now you can do this at really high temperatures for a very short time which is why you know pork and chicken has to be cooked to like what 160 or something like that um, to kill off all of that those bacteria that are in those on occasion um, so to make sure that it is properly safe to eat but you can bring the temperature down and increase the time and it'll still be safe to eat so you can eat a, a medium rare pork chop that's totally safe to eat as long as it was cooked using sous vide and maintained at the right temperature to pasteurize it for as long as it needs to be at so you know if you're gonna be safe there there'll be people on the internet who tell you you know you know get out of your your old-fashioned ways and, and just eat a medium rare pork chop don't do it like <laughs> just don't do that you know like no. <laughs> um, but if you cook it with sous vide and you maintain it at the right temperature for the right time, according to uh, you know your own local um, or national or whatever uh, food safety guidelines, as long as you do that, um, they'll have it all outlaid for you. Um, then you you can eat a medium rare pork chop and it will be safe to eat. Um, which is uh, like the only way really that you can do that safely and that's an experience that is far superior <laughs> to eating like you know well done anything honestly I mean, it's just not very pleasant um, so anyway how does this all kind of fall back onto my parents went out and ordered sous vide well because all that good stuff I just told you about none of it <laughs> came to play in the uh, in in this sous vide experience that my parents just had because what uh, what this restaurant or whatever did was they put a whole bunch of liquid like the marinade into the bag while it was being sous vide while it was being cooked in the uh, in the in the water and then I don't believe it was seared afterwards so you just end up with this like bland just kind of like falling apart and it was oh and it was overcooked for sure like it was it was not medium rare it was well done it was it was a sous vide steak that was well done and i'm like who the heck does this um and it was cooked with like a, a bunch of marinade in it so it ended up like boiling so it wasn't sous vide it, it wasn't like separated from the water it was just boiling in the water um, so it, it was, of course, it was falling apart. <laughs> you know, like it, it was braised, basically. It's just a braised steak. Nothing special about that, really. So it was, uh, it was a very unpleasant experience. They liked it a lot, which you know, more power to them, I suppose. Um, I give it like a two out of ten, maybe. It was one of the worst steaks I've ever eaten in my life, but <laughs> to each their own. To each their own. It's a very bad experience, though, I would say. Because when you, when you overcook it, when it's sous vide, and especially when it's full of liquid, it's, ju it's, ju it's just a braised steak. It's a well-done braised steak. <laughs> like, that's it. And it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't good. They, they took everything that's good about sous vide and they managed to, to just yeet it all. They didn't get uh, a nice, perfectly cooked steak. You know, they didn't get uh, a good sear on the outside. They didn't get uh, a consistent doneness. They didn't get... You know, like they, they, I was just going on about how simple it is and how unskilled it is, but... You can mess it up. <laughs> yeah, I think you gotta be trying to mess it up, though. Like... Who, who the heck's getting a sous vide... Like, who the heck's getting an immersion circulator and then boiling stuff inside the bags that they put in the... Just boil it in a bot! Like, <laughs> what are you What are you doing? You're insane. This is a huge waste of... Anyway, that kind of brings us to the, uh, the third point that I was mentioning, which is mostly for commercial. Um, 
you can just like get a bunch of stakes, right? And then uh, like seal them in vacuum bags, or you can just order them sealed as well, I suppose. Uh, as long as you have uh, a proper provider that's like a uh, butcher that's gonna do that properly. Oh my god, I'm like not able to aim right now. Um, and then you can just leave them in the freezer. And uh, you can just cook it from frozen. Just like pull them out of the freezer and just stick them in. So like, you know, if, you, if you're working in a... If you're working in a big restaurant or something like that, right? You can uh, have a bunch of steaks in the freezer. And, um, you know, pull out like 10 steaks or 20 steaks at a time or whatever and stick it in like a big... Um, you know, sous vide container, and whenever somebody orders a, a steak, you just yank it out and put it on. And if it, if it ends up sitting there for like you know an extra hour or whatever, that's not really impacting the the uh, the 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 steak in any major way. Now, if you leave it there for like three, four, five hours, like you're starting to get into you know this this steak's going into the <laughs> into the the Philly cheesesteak uh, supplies but you know for for a little while it's totally fine Have you checked your ammo? so it's uh, it's very simple for that and then you just you know somebody orders a steak you just pull it out pull out the the old flamethrower and uh, sear the outside of it and there's your steak ready in like two minutes which is only viable in like a commercial sense because you're not gonna just like buy a bunch of steaks, leave them in your freezer, and then just have them always going because you're not going to eat that many steaks, and you will have to throw them out if you don't eat them. Um, which is, is, is a waste of money and then a waste of meat, so. Yeah, it was, uh, I was excited when they were like, it's sous vide steak. I'm like, dang. I didn't think you'd ever do that because, um, she was always afraid of sous vide. She was like, I don't want to eat boiled meat. And the first sous vide steak she eats is just <laughs> braised steak and I'm like it's not you're not really getting the whole sous vide experience here it's not really uh, the whole thing there you know what I mean but you know again they liked it that's what matters they're the ones who eat it they're the ones who paid for it I'm not the one that paid for it I'm not the one that had to eat it so my opinion doesn't really matter on that but it was, it was funny to me. It was funny to me, that's all that I can say. How about a sailing update, eh? How's the, uh, how's the sailing thing going? I haven't been talking about it lately. Have I decided I don't want to live on a boat anymore? No. No, I'm still, I'm still going forward with it. Still studying, still doing what I can. The thing is, though, is that this whole, like, sailing venture... Like, it's... Something I'm gonna do, for sure. I have no doubt about that. I'm I'm gonna be working towards it as as much as I can, of course. But it's it's a long-term goal. Um, so you know, no matter how excited I am about it, like right now, it's not it's not gonna speed it up. You know, I I can be as excited as I want and rush into it head first and end up uh, nowhere because there's it's time gated. You know, like I, I have to. I have to wait to get the money for a boat, I have to wait to, to like get training, I have to work on like losing weight and getting fit, like there's just so much stuff I have to do, like I'm waiting for my orchiectomy as well, um, and then like, you know, there's gonna be the recovery period after that, and then after that I'll finally be like actually, like maybe shopping for a boat sort of thing, like maybe actually like going out on boats at least or something you know like that's kind of the time frame and that's like a ways away and then it's like that's my starting point mostly so it's it's just it's it's a very it's a long-term goal one I'm gonna pursue in earnest but uh, definitely one that is <laughs> very long term so you'll hear you'll hear you'll, you'll hear sailing updates from me from time to time as I uh, do things but especially right now with like covid i'm like you know is is sailing worth risking going to to like a a sailboat or something and and uh, you know living on a sailboat with a few people for like a few weeks no 
Not not in the slightest bit. It's not worth it. So there's just there's there's a process to this that uh, that I kind of have to go through, and it's, it's time consuming. Anyway, it's gonna do it for today. So thanks for watching. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.